bowls or pan traps are another popular approach to monitoring and collecting bees. It's really quite simple. You need colored bowls and you need soapy water. This would be one squirt of Blue Dawn dish soap for a gallon of water. Bee bowls work on essentially the same principle as the blue vein traps. You have bright colors that attract floral visitors and then they fall in soapy water and drown. Bee bowls are deployed in three colors, fluorescent blue, fluorescent yellow, and white. And different um, species will be attracted to different colors so you can maximize the diversity by using a mix of colors. We will be deploying traps in open areas uh, for a couple reasons. One, open areas means that the traps will be visible to more insects and they can catch um, more bees that way. Also, bees are just more active in open areas. And then finally, um, you want to pick areas where you do have you know, some flat ground that you can put the traps on. If it's really thick vegetation and things, you won't have anywhere to place them. Plus, bees probably won't see them. So we're sticking with open areas. The standard method is to put these down in a line or in a transect. And we will start by putting one on the ground um, and uh, pouring in soapy water until it's about half full. Then taking five paces, putting down another bowl of the next color, filling it with soapy water, and then continuing on that uh, way in a straight line until you put out the number of traps that the protocol calls for. One tip is I like to, before going out to put the traps, arrange them in a, in a repeating sequence. So here I have blue, yellow, white, and then blue, yellow, white over and over. The exact order is not super important, but you want to have it in a repeating cycle so that you don't have two blue traps or two yellow traps right next to each other. We'll leave those traps out for 24 hours and then come back to collect them. Collecting bee bowls is essentially the same process as collecting the blue vein traps. Uh, the only real difference is that with the blue vein traps, you can you know, pick them up and bring them back to your car and work where it's most comfortable. Um, which can make it a little bit easier, where the, the bowls, if you tried to carry them around, they would spill and cause a big mess. So you really have to do this um, in location as you walk along the transect of the traps. So the things you'll need is a sieve or a net. Uh, these little brine strip nets are really good. Plastic spoon might be helpful, and you need your container for storing your specimens. And as always, perhaps the most important part is your label. It's not science without a proper label. Uh, your label will have all of the key information, date, location, GPS, trap method. In this case, we'll write bee bowls or pan traps uh, in the name. Put that in your container, written in pencil. And now I've got a trap here that has some bees in it. And it's pretty simple. Just pour that out into your sieve. Make sure that there's nothing left in the bowl. In this case, there's one stubborn fly that's stuck in there. So I'm gonna take the spoon, just uh, pull them out of there. You can just use your fingers too if you want. Little tiny fella there. And then those will go straight into your container. Now these nets and these containers are about the same size, which is pretty nice. You can just flip it over and poke them out, make sure everything's out, like that. Um, so you repeat that for all of the bowls in your transect. When you're done with that, you wanna fill them up uh, with 70% alcohol. This is actually 91%, so I'll dilute it a little bit later. Uh, and just cover it up just enough to cover your specimens, make sure there's none sticking to the wall or anything. Seal it up, and that's it. Just double check that there's a label in there, and you're all good. <laughs>